Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Fields, Agape Worldwide Ministry, Springfield, Virginia. We thank God for you joining us for this noonday prayer. We are coming together to pray. The Bible declares that we ought to always pray and not faint, no matter what you're going through, whatever the problems you may be facing. Many people going through many things, and we're praying for all of you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen, everybody. For the most part calls the pastor and tells them what's going on in their lives as they should amen and as a pastor should be ready to receive that that's part of our job description to be able to hear and listen to what people have to say sometimes it's not even to fix the problem sometimes it's not even to pray but for somebody to be able to express themselves Amen. Hallelujah. We just don't know how powerful it is just to have somebody to listen. Amen. To what we have to say. And we often do it with adults. Amen. But today we're going to talk about our children. Train up a child. Amen. We're going to talk from the subject train up. Train up. Amen. Coming from the book of Proverbs 22nd chapter. Be, uh, at the sixth verse, it says, train up a child in the way that he should go, he or her or the child should go. And when they are old, amen, it, it will not depart from them. Amen. Hallelujah. He will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. What is it? The training. What is the training? The life lessons, the environment, amen, that we set for our children. We put a special room in some cases and sanitize and clean and get the purest uh, ointments and diapers and clothes and we set up amen hallelujah and prepare we go through Lamar's we go through a lot of different things to prepare for the entry of that child amen hallelujah some build nurseries amen some starts uh, accounts when they're born they set up the college fund when they're born and we do a lot of different things to prepare for the entry of that child into this world. Amen. Hallelujah. But when they come here, they don't know whether what brand, whether it's a brand name or, amen, the, the dollar store brand. They don't know the difference. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, what you tell them and what you teach them and the environment that you place them in is, is what affects that child. Amen. When they come into the world, the language, amen, the air, amen. We, we don't smoke around our kids. Some don't. Some don't drink when they're pregnant. Amen. Hallelujah. Some we sacrifice for that child, for them to come into the world and have the best foot, the best standing, the solid foundation you want that child to have. Amen. Uh, that's better than you. And as we're in our maternal stage, amen, and, 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 and parenting stage, we're looking, amen, to develop, amen, the young people and the children that are in our lives, amen, even as a ministry, as a father paternal, amen, hallelujah, for the fathers and the maternal, for the mothers, amen, and y'all working together to raise that child, amen, hallelujah, to the best of your ability, to make sure that that child has everything that it needs, not just in birth, not just preparing for its birth, amen, hallelujah, but to help it, amen, develop into the best adult possible. As colleges and school, we point to the schools and the education system to help your child be prepared to uh, get gainful employment and be productive members of society. But what are we doing as parents? Are we putting our idiosyncrasies on them and shortcomings? I wanted to run track, so I'm going to buy you some track shoes. Amen. I'm a certain team fan, so you have to be a fan of that team. Just like you. Amen. Hallelujah. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, because you're listening to a pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. That not only train them and prepare them and be ready when they come into the world and set up the best world you possibly can for your child, but make sure they know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. And in this training, 
if you train them up in the way that they should go when they are older, amen, that training will never depart from them. That's what this wise man we call Solomon. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he said. Amen. That training will not depart from them. Good or bad, happy or sad, whatever you do to that child will be with that child. Amen. Unless they suppress it. Amen. For the rest of their life. And so you want to make sure that you give them the best. Amen. The best foot forward in the name of Jesus. And so in doing this, amen, I was researching and looking up some different things. And I ran across uh, this article by Dr. Josh Deferin. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. D-A-F-F-E-R-N. And it's the six steps to raise your kids up in Christ in this difficult world. Six steps to raise your kids up in Christ. Amen. In this difficult world. And I'm going to quote some of the things he said. And I'm going to add, y'all know, Pastor. Amen. He's going to add a little bit to it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So the first one, do do not be the reason why your child rebels. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, don't cause uh, your children to wrath. Amen. The parents eat sour grapes and uh, put their children's teeth on edge amen it becomes all about you your life is yours absolutely i tell couples all the time you know they say well, what's more important the parents or the children it is the it's the two adults because you're raising those children to someday leave and and create their own family amen hallelujah and their own group amen in the name of jesus so it is between you and that husband and that wife it's between that couple Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, we don't we don't charge. Amen. Hallelujah. Foolishly, our children, because of what we went through. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we don't put a wrath upon our child. We correct them. We discipline them. That's one of the steps that's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. But we also understand that we as God's people have a divine responsibility to raise them up knowing who Jesus is. Amen. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean you have to walk around and be perfect. That doesn't mean you're, you you can never make a mistake because we're human and we do. Amen. Hallelujah. But if we make this child's life about us, then they don't have a life of their own. They don't have a desire of their own. Y'all hear so many stories about children raised up in church and they, as soon as they get old enough to say no, they say no. And they don't come to church. Because a lot of times we, we are not the best example that we should be in front of our children. And our, our best, amen, example is not what we say. Our best example is what we do and how we live. So we don't want to make ourselves the reason why, amen, some children say, you know, they made me go to church and I had to do this this way. So when I got older, I, I heard I call it the call of the wild. When you get when you get a certain age, you hear the call of the wild, the call of the world. Amen. Tugging at you, your friends and your buddies and somebody you might th even think you in love with. Amen. Hallelujah. I started trying to draw you away from the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But if you if they're trained up in the way that they should go. When that training will never leave them, what you teach them with good or bad, like I said before, happy or sad, what you teach them will never leave them. Hallelujah. So the first step is don't be the reason why. Amen. Hallelujah. Your child rebels. Step number two. And we're going over six steps to raise your kids up in Christ in this difficult world. Don't make kids an idol. And he made a very good point about you can't discipline your idol. An idol is something that we worship and we idolize our kids. Amen. They was they 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 in six months they were talking. Amen. They was walking in seven, you know, and every little thing that they do, they the greatest on earth. They're greatest, they're the greatest in your world. Amen. Hallelujah. But we don't make them into idols. They're perfect. They do everything. Now, y'all know I'm, I'm gonna tell my age now. Amen. Everybody gets a trophy thing. Amen. <laughs> Everybody's a winner thing. I don't I don't believe in that because I don't believe that's the reality in life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, you have to learn how to deal with bullies. You have to learn how to deal with different things. And if your child is an idol, they perfect, then they can do no wrong. 
<clears throat> and they'll go through this world thinking they can do no wrong, that everything is handed to them. And so when you make a child an idol, when you make them something greater than what they are, amen, and not train them and prepare them for this world, then, then when they are grown, amen, this world, this world is cruel. Y'all know it's tough. It's rough. And nobody gives you anything. You got you to gotta make it happen, amen, in this world. I'm not talking about in Christ and salvation and holiness and righteousness, amen, hallelujah. But the basic understanding before it's time for them to receive the Spirit of God. They say a child's personality is intact, intact by the age of two. And so it's so important, amen, as the kids come up, love them, hug them. But wrong is wrong and right is right. And, and, and instruct them and give them discipline in their lives, amen, and so that they know what's right in this world. And, and when they do wrong, they need to understand the repercussions and consequences of doing things the wrong, the wrong way. So don't make your child an idol. If you make your child an idol, you can't punish an idol. You worship an idol. You don't correct an idol. You don't tell an idol to clean their room. Hallelujah. You don't tell an idol to wash the dishes or take out the trash. Hallelujah. You can't make a child an idol because now you're worshiping your child, but you're preparing your child to be able to take care of themselves. If they wash dishes, they can wash dishes when they're grown. If they iron their clothes, they know how to iron their clothes. When they go. I'm so grateful to my mother. Boy, I try to, Lord Jesus, don't get me started. <laughs> Amen. Some, some houses and cultures believe that a, a, a young man don't do things. Women wash dishes, women cook, women sweep and clean. Man sit around and do, you know, this and that and think. He's supposed to be thinking, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. But I don't mind the devil's workshop. But anyway, that's a different story for a different day. Hallelujah. But my mother believed, amen, because those three sisters, had did it had to do it i had to do it as well amen one of her favorite jokes amen i got four of them amen hallelujah ma won't you get a dishwasher i got four of them ma why don't you get a remote control i got four of them hallelujah <laughs> amen hallelujah but but she would not let me get away with not doing what any of the other girls did amen so i had to learn how to wash dishes and and sweep the floor and clean just like they did. Amen. Hallelujah. So I did not like it at the time. But now I appreciate it. I appreciate it greatly because I can take care of myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of my training from both my parents. Amen. Because of their training. Amen. I can take I'm self sufficient. Amen. Amen. Some people might say too much. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, my preacher friend said you do too much. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't make your kids an idol. Number three, <clears throat> show your kids how to successfully navigate this world. Show them the reality of this world. Now, there some people prescribe that you never disagree in front of your kids, even though they hear you anyway. I, I'm, of the, of the, I'm in the group that says you should. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having a disagreement with, with in front of your kids, but I say it's good that you come with a resolution. Amen. In front of your kids. Don't go into the bedroom and y'all ah, and y'all have it out. No, 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 no. You don't have everything is not emotional. Everything don't have to be yelled at. But if you come up with an uh, opposition with each other, have that conversation in front of your children. Amen. Hallelujah. And come to a resolution. Most of all. In front of your kids, amen, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And you're showing them um, how to navigate. The, you're showing them anyway because they watch what you do. You know, you're going through the store and you're picking grapes off and eating them while you're in the store and you're doing different stuff. They see that. You, you say, tell tell her mama ain't here. Mama says she's not here. <laughs> tell them not here. Hallelujah. Mama says she's not here. Amen. And now you got cell phones. Back in the day, we had one phone. It was a house phone. It wasn't an individual phone. Everybody have individual phones now. You can't get away with that as much now. Amen. That they did back then. But we tell them different things. Tell them to lie. You know, knock at the door. Tell them nobody's here. Mama said nobody's here. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So how to show your kids, step number three, six, six steps to raise your kids in Christ in this difficult world uh, by Dr. Josh Dayfram. Die from day from amen hallelujah and so we on number three show your kids how to successfully navigate this world amen hallelujah and to navigate this world is to have the spirit of god down on inside of you 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To let the Lord lead you to study, to show yourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Number four, shape their world with your words. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so you can speak things into your, your children's life. You can prophetically speak over your child. Amen. Hallelujah. The, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, no seed begging bread. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our mama's not perfect. Daddy makes mistakes sometimes, but I love you. Amen. And we're going to pray. We're going to talk to these things together. Amen. I know the teacher said this about you. I know the doctors may have said this about you. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm speaking life. Amen. When they're saying this is they're going to have a propensity to do this or do that. Amen. Hallelujah. God has the final say. He's Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He which was, he is, and is to come. El Shaddai. He is the Almighty God. So, amen. They don't have the last say. So shape their world with your words. And you can shape their world as well with, with the books and the teaching and instruction and all the different things that you could do to help mold that child and give them the best foot forward. Amen. My mother that he talked to me, I'll all be slow. I'll always be behind all the other students. That's what they told my mother. So she will always feed us healthy food and healthy omega threes before I, we knew what an omega was. Amen. We thought that was the Greek alphabet. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I didn't know nothing about that. Amen. I knew somebody had one of those superheroes had an omega blast. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, that's all I knew. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I'm watching cartoons. Dark side. Amen. Hallelujah. Had the Omega Blast. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so uh, I didn't know what Omega was, but Mama was giving me salmon and fish and amen and feeding us vegetables. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We didn't grow up on a whole lot of junk. Hey, I don't remember one time. Yeah, my sisters can remind me. Some of y'all might be on now. Y'all can remind me. Amen. But I don't remember one time when we had junk food at the dinner table. Amen. Hallelujah. Now they can correct you. Now we we put all of us pushing sixty. Some hit it. It's, you know, Jesus, God bless the oldest. Amen. Hallelujah. And but uh, uh, um, I don't remember one time where dinner was junk food. Amen. She took us to McDonald's sometimes and took us to lunch or something like that. Amen. But dinner usually was a home cooked meal. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we can shape our children. Amen. Hallelujah. With our words and what we say. Be careful what you say. Words have spirit and words are life. Amen. And you bring life to whatever you're saying because you bring it into existence. So speak life, speak love. And even if you raise, it's harder when you're raising other people's children. Trust me. It's harder. Amen. Because they're already uh, scarred by a lot of different things. Amen. So they may not believe what you say when you speak prophetically over their life. Amen. There's some goodness in them. There's some truth in them. Amen. You are not what they did to you. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not how they treated you. You are not what was done to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so uh, to, to help mold, amen, the, the, a child and speak over their life, amen, that, that, that's not your Amen. Biological children is more difficult, but it can be accomplished. Amen. I know it. I know it can be accomplished. Amen. If you speak love and life into people's lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can shape their world with your words. Number five, parent with eternity in mind. They have a soul. Amen. They have an eternal resting place. So when we're training them up, we're training up. Amen. To train up, we're training them up. Amen. Hallelujah. We are training them to one day leave this world and make heaven their home. That's why we teach them the word of God. That's why they should be in Bible class. They in karate class. Amen. The scouts, they in all kinds of different uh, baseball and football and nothing wrong with any of those things. But make sure they're in the Bible class somewhere or they have a youth book or some sort of uh, um, book or something to study God's word. When they can read, they can read. Hallelujah. They can study the word of God. If they can read, amen, Sam, mate, Matt, Pam, or whatever it is, amen, some sort of cartoon book, amen, then you can also give them the word of God and they can start their journey with Christ, even in their childhood and development. Amen. The name Agape did not come when I was an adult. Amen. Hallelujah. I was a little child over there in Cameron Valley. 
and and Dr. Galloway was teaching. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I don't remember the class, but he taught talking about the three different types of love, and he said eros is the romantic love, and I giggled because I was a child. <laughs> and and phileo, brotherly love. I thought about Philadelphia, Amen, the city of brotherly love. And then when he said agape, he said agape is God's love, unconditional love, and that thing just it just it just sunk into my heart. You know, so God gave me agape when I was a child. So when I see my notes, amen, the ministry God has given me for my youth up and, and my brother, uh, Ricky, reminded me that when I was about 15, 16 years old, amen, he reminded me of that, amen, hallelujah. And when God called me into the ministry, amen, he reminded me again because when we was, when we was teenagers, he said, I uh, was just standing there talking, talking about what God has given me. I'm 15 years old telling Ricky, amen, what God, is, the agape, what the church was going to be about. And he said, when the Lord bless you with your church, I'm coming. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm coming to join y'all church. And he belonged, amen, to a great church down in Alexandria. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, um, and when and when the Lord called me into the field, he he was one of the first ones to come. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I'm grateful that he he kept his promise. Amen. Hallelujah, my brother. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so uh you parent with eternity in mind. Amen. It's not just your child, they're also a child of God. It's not just a child, but also a child of God. And we need to understand that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Teach them to love Jesus. Amen. Sixth chapter. Amen. They can only see that if they see you that doing that. My mother, my Lord, I, I hate to keep going back to it, but that, that's one of my great examples. My mother was shouting, praise the Lord, right there in the in the house. Amen. We I'm there watching uh, <clears throat> Spotty Friends or uh, Superman, Batman, and Aquaman. Hallelujah. I'm sitting there watching mine and my own business. All of a sudden, I hear this. So there she go again. She <laughs> and all, and all, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And she'd be on the phone with somebody. And they talking. Amen. Hallelujah. My mother never talked to the person on the phone. She talked to the whole house when she on the phone. Hallelujah. She learned to whisper in a helicopter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So she she talking also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And it started going up. Thank you. Thank you. And after a while, no organ, no guitar, no church, nobody preaching. Hallelujah. She up there giving God praise. Hallelujah. That's that's how you teach them. That's how you train them. Them seeing you, though you're slaying me, yet will I trust in you. Hallelujah. They see you praise God despite your circumstances. Baby, we ain't got nothing today, but let's give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rent is due. Show them the eviction notice. Hallelujah. And shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Show them the doctor's note. Hallelujah. What the doctor says. Show them your medicine list. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But none of these. Amen. Some of these words I can't even pronounce. None of these compares to the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you teach them to love Jesus. Hallelujah. Not tell them, baby, you love Jesus. Uh, do you love Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They say what, you, what they think you want them to say. Hallelujah. But if they have a personal relationship with him. Hallelujah. Thank you. I saw on uh, Facebook, y'all might have seen that little boy in the back seat. This is my exodus. He was crying, hallelujah, and praising God. This is my exodus, hallelujah. He didn't know he couldn't spell exodus, hallelujah. But that young man was giving God praise, hallelujah. So, so obviously, obviously, amen. Uh, he's seen one of those parents or both, amen, uh, uh, worship and praise Jesus, hallelujah. And had a love for Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. But they see it through your relationship. They see it. Amen. Through your worship. They see it through your praise. Amen. Hallelujah. They have a soul too. Don't forget. Your child need to go to heaven. Hallelujah. And your child need to have a relationship with Christ. Amen. If I add a seventh. Amen. Hallelujah. If I add one to this doctor. Excuse me, sir. If you don't mind. If I add one more. Hallelujah. Repent. Be baptized. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. As soon as you're able. As soon as they're able to understand it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Build their relationship with Christ and knowing Christ and knowing how to keep things. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, right with God as far as their eternal salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. And that if we if we sin, we have advocate with the father. 
Amen. Hallelujah. And so um, if we confess our sin, he's just and faithful for the, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. We went a little bit different way today. Amen. But I pray you heard something today that's been a blessing to you as far as raising your children. And some of us, if we don't have kids, we raise plenty of other people's. I got a lot of children out there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you influence people's lives, people that you don't even know looking at you. Hallelujah. And seeing, um, amen, what you're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, in your example, some of that bread is coming back now. I never knew. Amen. It was telling me different things. I wouldn't even be in church if it wasn't for you. Amen. This was going on like this and this was going on like that. Amen. I thank God that I had you. Amen. Hallelujah. And your Bible class and teaching and even the stuff that we did with the choir. Uh, the bread comes back across those waters over some of those things as well. So you never know who's watching you. You never know what child is watching you. And so it's not it's, it's, it's going to go beyond you. You know, if you leave this world. They are still going to be here. And they're going to carry that message on and pass it down. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Elder Erling Thompson, Mother Joanne Thompson, uh, Mother uh, Vanison, Ada Vanison, um, um, uh, Mother, Mother, Mother Roberts, Mother Lennis Roberts. Um, these are some of the women that I grew up under um, who was, was, was kind of very open in teaching and helping me develop as a young man as a child, amen. The men, amen, as well, amen. Bishop Robinson, uh, J.C. Roberts, Lord Jesus. Bishop Robinson's birthday today. God bless you, Bishop, amen. He's in heaven with the Lord. He got the best present ever, amen. In the name, of, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy and right at his right hand of blessings forevermore. So God bless you. My Uncle Boy, amen, hallelujah, amen. Uh, Yancey Green, he's in heaven too. Today's his birthday. Amen. I got a deacon out there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Gabriel, uh, a decade. I forgot it. Lord, I forgot your middle name, man. I, please forgive me. Uh, Titus. I want to say Titus. Amen. Your dad's name. Amen. Hallelujah is your middle name. So happy birthday to you as well. Amen. In the name of Jesus, all of you. Amen. Uh, July 2nd, folk. Amen. Happy birthday to you in the name of Jesus. If I forgot anybody, please forgive me. Um, and so, um, and growing up under these great women, they, they taught me how, especially Erlene, Erlene would gather the young people. She would talk with them. We've had what was called rap sessions where we sit down and just talk and she would listen to us, you know? And so, um, and so she, she, she came here, you know, somebody else's child, you say, go to your mama, go here. She would say, come here to me and to the other youth. And I do that. I did that with uh, Jalea and Tamika and Keela and Derek. And, uh, and if, I, if I started naming names, I'm going to mess up. Whitney and Brittany, those are my babies. Amen. Hallelujah. Started um, years ago. Amen. And so um, I said, come here. I did any of them. Uh, Joshua, any of the boy, young men coming up, Fred. Um, so any of the ones coming up, I missed Calvin and the Amen. And so Sam and Rashad and everybody, I treated them like my own kids. So uh, and so I didn't I didn't tell them, go to your mama. I said, come here. And I explained to them. Amen. Hallelujah. The reality of the situation. So uh, and, and that responsibility really started with Whitney and Brittany uh, and, their, and their mom and 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 her asking me to be their godfather. And I felt the a responsibility I never felt before because I was a child and I, I walked like a child and understood as a child and I did childish things and I was doing some childish things when she asked me amen hallelujah but when she when and I looked in them, them girls eyes and I was like oh man uh, I had to straighten up a flower I went home I went you know I went home and 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 started to try to be more responsible Amen. I had not obtained at that point, and neither was I perfect, but I was pressing toward the mark of a high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. And parenting is a responsibility. There's there's a training up that we have to do as adults, because if we're not up, how are you going to train a child up if you're not there? 
Amen. Hallelujah. If you if you're in the muck and the mire with them, how are you up from that? And so you have to teach them to get out of this. Amen. And walk in. Amen. Righteousness and holiness and Christianity and love of God and relationship with God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't have a great relationship with God, how can you show that to that child? Amen. So you have to be the example and help them. Amen. Uh, to traverse through this world beyond us. Beyond us, as Bishop Roberts is gone, my mama's gone, my daddy's gone. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of these great people, mother priest, deacon priest, amen, deacon board, Dixon, amen. Hallelujah. All, I'm starting naming name, Mother Giles, Mother Canty, amen, Mother Williams, amen. All these great women and men of God, amen. They're gone off the scene, but yet they remain with all of us because they poured into us. Some was negative, some was positive. Amen. Hallelujah. So we help them navigate the world. We don't be the we don't want to be the reason the child rebels. Hallelujah. We don't want to make our kids an idol. Amen. We want to show our kids how to successfully navigate this world, shape their world with your words, parent with eternity in mind, and teach them to love Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We praise and magnify your holy name. Lord God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you help us as they're watching us, they're listening to what we say. The children's number one influence is the adults, is, the, is, is their guardians and, and parents, Lord God, and leading them, amen, and helping them to develop into adults one day, Lord God. They're listening, they're sponges, they hear what we say, they hear, amen, our attitudes, they know what we love, they know what we hate. Lord God, we, they know who we talk about. They know who we love and lift up. And Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that we'll be not perfect, but be that example to our young people, Lord God, to be an example of believers, Lord God, in the name of Jesus and help our children be raised, amen, with the with the admonition and, 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 and respect to God and, and relationship with God more than anything else, that they may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and walk upright and teach others also. Amen. A wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Let's leave Christianity, Christ, holy, living, righteous, studying God's word, biblical theolo theologians, Lord God, hallelujah, of your word, of your truth, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, hallelujah. Help us to study, show ourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen and amen. God bless you, family. Love you in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming on with us for this noonday prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. And we continue to pray for you and any young people, ch children that needs prayer. Amen. Families that need prayer. People living in cars. and Amen. There's still people living in these consecration camps. Amen. Concentration camps camps amen and consecration is a different thing amen hallelujah amen and i saw this report the other day where these kids are still living in these little um uh, built cities things that they that they built for the immigrants coming across the border illegal immigrants and so uh, what what message are we sending them amen what training are we giving them that's not trained up Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's giving them a negative connotation about the United States and us as a people. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's pray for them. Pray for these ones in school. Amen. That's missing school. They're not getting trained up. Amen. Thank you, parents. Amen. That, not, that are not teachers and not even apt to teach. Amen. But you're teaching your child. You're doing the best you can. Amen. And turn your, your living room into a classroom. Amen. God bless you, everybody who are sacrificing, raising other people's kids and doing what they can. Amen. To make somebody's life better. Amen. Hallelujah. The song says, if I can help somebody as I travel along, then my living will not be in vain. But what you teach them, amen, will go beyond you. Amen. Hallelujah. It goes to the next and even the third generation. So thank you all for your labor and your hard work. And we're praying for all those teachers and surrogate teachers, substitute teachers. Amen. School systems. I think it's too soon, my personal opinion. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I think it's too soon. I think they need to kill every not kill everything, but cancel everything until next year. Amen. I think we'll be, we'll be on a more firmer footing next year than we are right now so i i really truly believe that they i hope that they don't open up any schools 
Uh, <clears throat> I don't hope they don't open up anything this year. Amen. We halfway today marks half the halfway point of the year of 2020. Amen. So the 2020, we're in the middle of the 2020. Hallelujah. We right there in the middle of it, and right here in this middle, I think I think we should just go ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. And just make sure that um, everybody is okay. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I try not to date the broadcast, but I have no choice. So God bless you, everybody. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God for you. And so we made it halfway through. I'm not canceling 2020. I don't regret 2020. My mama passed in January. Amen. Just lost a trustee. Amen. Honorable man, Bishop Logan, Roger Logan. Amen. Hallelujah. Doctor. Amen. Cotton. Arthur Cotton. Amen. Great man. That was my God daddy. Amen. Hallelujah. Great man of God. Teacher. Amen. Preacher. Leader. He has a great leadership. Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop Logan, what can I say? Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Bishop Campbell called him Socrates. Amen. Bishop Campbell called him. Socrates, amen, hallelujah, so that, that's that's enough said right there, hallelujah, amen, and so, uh, and I can't even start talking about my mom, that's a whole, I can't even do that, she gave birth to me, amen, hallelujah, she got the other side of my belly button, hallelujah, amen, that's my mama, hallelujah, amen, and so, uh, and we're dealing with a lot of different things, amen, and, and we're pushing along, trying to make it through all this loss, but there shall be glory after this, amen, we're praying for Netta, and the babies, amen, and loss of this great man, worked very hard, worked for his labor, for his family, and did all he could, amen, while he was here. And God called him from labor to a reward, amen, hallelujah. So we thank God for uh, the, the Robinson family, extended family, got to meet some of the family that I didn't really know at first, except destiny, amen, hallelujah, destiny, amen, hallelujah. And so God bless you, love everybody, love you in Jesus' name. Keep, keep the families and friends in prayer. We love one another and build up one another. Amen. Some of them steps for raising up a child is for showing love one to one another and building your relationship with other Christians. Amen. And some of you children will have to use those steps on your parents. Amen. Don't make them into idols. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And because you're going to see the reality of them because they're going to deteriorate. Once a man, twice a child. Amen. And once an adult, twice a child. Amen. We'll return to that child state. And some of us childish all our whole life, but pray for us, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Because if any man be in Christ, they're, they're a new creature. Excuse me. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. In Jesus' name. Love you. Pray for us as we pray for you. Our closing scripture, 1 Timothy, first chapter 17, verse now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. This is the Agape Way. God bless you, family. Love you in Jesus' name. And I'll see you guys next time. God bless you. Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invite you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Boudinot Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.